Before we get to linked lists, I need to review another topic with you called random access. So I need you to understand what random access is and why it's so powerful and why it's the entire secret to the speed behind an array and also behind an array list. Remember, array lists are essentially built on top of arrays. You don't see the array inside the array list, but that's really what's going on inside. I want you to imagine, for example, that we have an array of one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. So let's say uh, inside my Java code, I did int array nums equals new int six, like that. I did that, okay? So I declared an array of six integers like that. What happens in the compiler is that the compiler picks some location, some location that has enough contiguous memory to hold these six integers. How many bits will each of those integers occupy in Java? Sir, do you know? Take a guess, how many bits in an integer in Java? 32. 32 is right. So this one will be 32 bits, this one will be 32 bits, this one 32, this one 32, 32 bits, and this one 32 bits. And what will happen is that this nums variable, right, it's going to point right here at the beginning at this first memory location. See that, right? Now let's say I put some numbers in here. I'll just make some numbers up. 7, 2, 5, uh, minus 4, 3, 0, and 1 like that. If I ask the array, if I ask the array, hey, fetch me nums sub zero, right? It knows that nums started here. So it knows that the address here and the next 32 bits that go from this address over occupy nums sub zero. So it knows to grab this amount of data, look in there for whatever value it is, and it returns it. Yes, Mila? So can you make an array of clones? Can you make an array of longs then? Yes, if you make an array of longs, the only difference will be is that instead of each integer being 32 bits, it'll be 64 bits. Okay, got it. Thank you. Now let's say that I don't want the first number. Let's say I want to I want to get access to this number here. So now what the compiler does, sorry, what the run mach runtime machine does is if I go nums sub two, right? Because this is num sub zero, num sub one, num sub two. It takes this address here, nums, right? And it knows that you want to move three over, right? Three over, even though it's a two here, because it starts at zero, right? So it knows it needs to add 32, 32 to get to the third number over. So it knows that it needs to add 64 to this address to move over here. When it got over here, it needed to add zero. When it, when it wants to fetch this number, it needs to add 64. So it knows, if I want to access this last location, it knows it needs to add this and this and this and this and this like this. So one, two, three, four, five. So it needs to do this calculation. Nums plus five times 32, like that. I'll take your questions in a few minutes. So what's happening here, and I want you to understand how important this is, is that no matter which element in the address, uh, uh, in the array I'm trying to retrieve, the calculation is always beginning address plus however many you want to move over times how big each data structure is. You see that, right? It doesn't matter if I want this one or this one or this one. It goes through here. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, if n is 0, it's easier to calculate. It takes the same number of cycles for the computer to add 0 to a number as it does to take any other 32-bit integer and add it to the number. So therefore, and this is the really important thing for you to walk away with for today, one of the items, is that it takes the same amount of time to retrieve any element in the array. That's why we call it random access. You can pick any random index you want, and the retrieval time is exactly the same. What is the big O of the retrieval time of an element in this array? Mr. Nikita. Sir, this is the address where the array begins. 
this is how many you want to move over and this is how big each element is. Look in here, Nikita. Do you see in here the size of the array being part of the calculation? Sir, this number is just going to be a number that's multiplied here. It's not going to loop through this number. So, yes. So the access time for this array is going to be O of 1. That's why programmers like the arrays so much, because they're really, really fast. So whether you want to retrieve, uh, retrieve this thing or this thing, the retrieval times are fixed, and they're fast. So that's why arrays are powerful. Now, I want you to discuss with the person next to you, if they're so powerful, why would we consider anything else? What's bad about arrays? So let's have a brief review now of what's bad about arrays. There's a couple of things that's really bad about them. Yes, Mr. Amrani. Can't change the length. Can't change the length. I got an array of six, it's going to be six for its life. If I need a bigger array, I'm going to have to allocate more memory, copy everything over, and then move the pointer. That's a pain. There's another thing, another operation that's really slow on arrays or array lists. Can someone tell me what that operation is? Yes, miss? No, well, parsing is pretty fast because the random access here, it takes O of n time, I guess that's can't do much better than that for parsing, is looking at them one at a time. Right. But there's some other operations that are also O of n, which you really wish they wouldn't be. Yes, Mr. Uh, Orespaev? Is it like checking if it contains something? So that does tend to be a problem. We can, if we're looking for a particular number, we have two choices. We can keep the array sorted, and then we can do what kind of a search on it to find a number if the array is sorted. Um, yes, sir? Bisection? We could do a bisection search on it. What would be the big O of that operation? Yes, sir? O log n. O log n. We could do that. Alternatively, we could keep the array unsorted. What would be the search time on that operation, Mr. Schulson? Uh, that's just O of n. That would be O of n. Now, what's wrong with keeping it sorted? Well, that in itself has overhead on it, right? So that's one issue. Let me give you a, a bigger clue here. Let's say I want to, let's say I just have this part of the array currently being used and this happens to be empty and we have some information in our code that tells us that it's empty. And let's say that I want to insert a number right in here. What's going to have to happen now? Let's say I want to insert it right here where the minus four is. What's going to have to happen now with the minus four and the three? Yes, sir, Mr. Fenneman? I'm going to have to shift everything over. How long is that going to take? Mr. Alejandro, sir, if I need to insert a number here, how long is it going to take to move everything over? O of n squared. No, sir, it's not O of n squared. How many numbers am I going to have to move in this case at most? Okay, at most, sir, in a general case, how many would I have to move? If I have to insert at the beginning, how many numbers would I have to move? Oh, um, I'd have to move n numbers. So you can see that an insertion would take O of n time. Well, if your app needs to do lots of insertions, you can see that that could become a problem. Wouldn't it be kind of nice if we could just kind of sneak it in there and just kind of not have to one at a time move everything over? What about a deletion? What if I have to delete this five? Is that going to have a similar issue? Mr. Ajoji, sir, let's say I want to delete this 5. What's going to happen to happen to all these numbers on the right of the 5? How long will that take, sir? So if I delete here, once again, I'm going to have to shift everything over to the left. And once again, that's another O of n operation. So you can see that these are the weaknesses of the array. They don't resize easily and addition, insertions and deletions take up O of n time. Now I'll stop here and take some questions. Yes, sir? What do you mean delete? Wouldn't it just be zero? Or so let's say I want to get rid of this five, yeah. and for some reason I don't want a hole there, right? I want to move everything over. I want to keep it together. So now I'm going to have to move these over. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what I mean by a delete. Yes, Ms. Mila? Is that why, like, the array index starts with zero? Array start with zero because you can see in this calculation yeah. here it's easier. The other reason, Miss, is that when you use the modulo operator, when you roll over, mm -hmm. 
some number, it rolls back to zero. It doesn't roll back to one. Okay. So those are some of the reasons why indexing it starts at zero. 